Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Demystifying Azure Cloud Security, presented by NeoVera, where you will learn more about Azure Cloud Security, including best practices and how to protect your data in the cloud. So this webinar is intended for organizations just starting their Azure Cloud Security journey. A few questions we will answer for you. If you are planning on moving to Azure or if you're already there, how do you secure it? What is the Microsoft Shared Security Model? How do you manage security risk, compliance, and balance business requirements in Azure? And what security controls are available, best practices and approaches to do SecOps in Azure? Our presenters for today are Greg Shanton, Vice President of Cybersecurity. Greg leads NeoVera's cybersecurity professional and managed services for commercial and government clients. Uh, he also has more than 25 years of experience in the cybersecurity field. Our second presenter for today is Nestor Morjan. He is a senior enterprise security architect. Nestor has over 30 years of IT experience specializing in cybersecurity and he has been a key player in many major enterprise transformation projects. So we welcome you both today and look forward to hearing all the great information that you're about to share. Great, thank you, Shar. I really appreciate it. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone listening live to the webcast uh, today. And for those on the webinar who will be watching the recording of this, uh, we're really glad that you were able to join today. And as, and as Shar just said that, uh, this is you know, really focused around when, with customers that are looking to start their journey or just beginning their journey uh, to Azure and trying to figure out how to secure it. And so hopefully today with, with, uh, with our presentation today, we'll demystify some of, some of that and the things, that, things you need to look out for is what Shar was just saying. So Greg, real quick, um, you know, before we actually get started, um, I do have a, you know, a couple of quick things. Um, so if I can just jump in real quick. Um, anyone on the webinar, if you do happen to have any questions, please take the time and post these questions in the window to the side of your screen. We will also do our best to answer all of these at the end of the slides. Secondly, we also have a few polls for you to answer throughout. With that in mind, let's start our first poll question. How would you rate your organization's experience with designing and managing Azure security? Greg, Nestor, what do you think? I think the, the important thing is people that are just thinking getting their feet wet, um, there's a lot of information uh, that needs to be looked at, reviewed, designed into the migration process. And I think we're gonna try to demystify some of those components in the security part of Azure. Perfect. Well, based yep. upon the poll yep. results, uh, we have quite a few intermediates. So whether you're a beginner expert and not even sure, I think Greg and Nestor are going to be able to uh, broaden your horizon on quite a few of these things today. So Greg, all back Perfect. to you. Great. Perfect, Shara. Thank you. And just, you know, at, at NeoVera, you know, the, we are a, a managed service provider and a cybersecurity services company providing professional services and managed services for our clients, whether it be small startups all the way to the Fortune 500, across the spectrum of private data centers, as well as up in Azure, um, uh, AWS, and then over in Equinix and Oracle Cloud, et cetera, right? But today we're really focused on, on talking about Azure and what we can do there. Um, and then probably some of the, you know, some of your concerns that you have about moving to the cloud. You know, for instance, when you're moving to the cloud, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's all about your data. And your reputation you know no one wants to no one wants to be on the news you know the new york times the washington post on cnn talking about data loss data compromise uh breaches ransomware right just as uh, some of the latest ransomware uh, events have happened around around the world uh no one no one wants to be in that and that affects your reputation you can affect loss of revenue it can drive up let's say in the us on the east coast drive up the cost of gas for all of us and have gas shortages as we've all just experienced 
Uh, it could be healthcare uh, environments that help, happened over in Ireland, et cetera, right? So there's a lot of, a lot of different pieces there that uh, uh, to worry about concern about why, you know, so data and also about reputational risk. And again, ransomware, which is, uh, we'll talk about later in this as well. You know, on top of that, right, you do have some, some industries are, uh, I'll say, uh, they have to look at compliance in a very different way, right? So they have to adhere to, if you're a financial institution or if you're over in Europe, you have to adhere to GDPR, you may have to adhere to SOC 2. So how do you, you know, how do you look at that as well? Because that's a concern also. And so I'd ask uh, Nestor to touch a little bit on compliance in the cloud. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, one of the good things that Azure provides is a whole bunch of templates for these industry-wide compliances. Um, the, the thing that I want you to remember is if you don't instrument your assets, your managed assets, you can't report on them, right? So Azure provides significant number of instrumentation, alerting, reporting for any and all of the assets, whether it be network servers, uh, identity management, and so on. So the Microsoft 365 Compliance Manager provides you the controls to be able to manipulate all those logs, to analyze the logs, consolidate them, normalize them, in, in order for you to be able to report. So normally any organization, as you know, even on-prem, when you have to be NIST compliant or SOC 2 compliant, you need to provide all those reports to the, the right agency or the right uh, compliance officer. So one of the things that Microsoft does for you, uh, they provide these templates out of the box already. So that way all the instrumented assets that you have are taken care of security wise, get reported back into uh, in, in, into these templates automatically and reported automatically. So Greg, if you look at the next slide, it also provides all these dashboards so again, besides the physical templates that you could write the reports to and provide to whoever you need to be compliant to, whatever governmental agency or local industry agency, it provides you with a dashboard like you see on the left here. You're 75% compliant, but that's rolled up for a, from a bunch of these other templates that come out of the box. So for NIST, for SOC, for Office 365, those components are gathering the information constantly on a daily basis and you could just go to these dashboards and we're able to at a glance see what your compliance score is so this is major this is a lot of work sometimes it takes physically months for any organization to create these reports and they have to sometimes like banks and some institutions have to report on a quarterly basis you could do this on a daily basis based on these acquisitions of of all this you know technology behind the scenes so I want to turn over to Greg to look at the complexity behind the Azure infrastructure in terms of all the security controls provided there. Yeah, Nestor, like you were saying, go ahead and, and uh, go ahead and do the security controls around, you know, to map them up to compliance. It does get complex. And there in the if you look at this, you know, whether it's BO365 or Microsoft 365 now, uh, the different controls up in Azure, um, it, it does get does get a little complex and you look and you look at this reference architecture and the first thing you go is wow it's overwhelming there's a lot and it is it's, it's very comprehensive and, and this is microsoft's from two years ago microsoft's cybersecurity reference architecture uh, and there's a lot of pieces to it and there's been different updates over the past couple of years to it uh, but you know as i walk as you walk through this i'll say elephant if you will you know how do you eat an elephant you know bit by bit you know bite by bite uh, same thing for security. There's different pieces here, right? So first, you know, you have your, uh, you, know, you, you get all that information that Nestor was just talking about for compliance as an example. You know, compliance and security go hand in hand, but they're not the same, they're different. So you have to collect logs and, and all the information and have all your security controls in place for security, but also for compliance, right? So you have to have all that coming in and that can be a lot of information that can be very overwhelming, right? Uh, so one thing Microsoft's done is they've got different products that work together, you know, like Microsoft Defender uh, for the server, for your desktops, uh, laptops, et cetera, Azure Security Center. Um, and they've also got their first you know, entry into the market that started about 18 months ago uh, called uh, Sentinel, which is a security incident and event management tool and also automation with uh, what they call the acronym SOAR. 
So that pulls all the information together. So that's that's a very important piece to understand. There's a lot of other products in the market, third-party products that do similar things. Uh, this just happens to be Microsoft's uh, way. So you can look at doing Microsoft, uh, or you can also look at doing uh, third-party. Next piece is is very important. It's around you know identity and access management. You you need to know who who someone is or the service that you're interfacing with before you do business and before you start sharing your data. So if that's all the identity information, that's the authentication, that's the multi-factor authentication, uh, that's integration, what people call you know Active Directory or Azure Active Directory, uh, any type of directory service, right? But Microsoft's is Azure AD up in Azure. Um, that's very that's very important. Uh, and we'll go into a little bit later, you'll see some architecture diagrams that uh, we came up with that show kind of like, you know, you've got Active Directory, your, maybe your lo local location, you know, your retail stores, your headquarters, your warehouses, and then it's up in Azure as well or in a private data center, right? So, but that that's another critical piece, the identity access management piece of it with MFA, multi-factor authentication. Um, even up in Azure, right, you still have to worry about doing your network controls. Um, you can do that, you know, just pure, you know, like packet filtering firewalls, web application firewalls, next generation firewalls or slash UTMs. There's a lot, there's so many vendors out there that do this. You know, you have, you've got your Cisco's, you've got your Palo Alto's, you've got your Fortinet's, you've got your WatchGuards, you've got your Sophos's, uh, and then many, many more Barracuda's, et cetera, that all do this type of work. Um, and, you know, Microsoft also has one as well called the Azure Firewall. Right, and they do NSGs or network security groups, which ends up being packet filtering. But that's that's very important. There's a lot of those pieces you have to put together as well. So it's not just throw it up into the cloud and it's done. Right. Um, another piece is you know your central place that you know all a lot of the information is coming into again is Azure Security Center. If you're up in if you're up in Azure building your systems, you, you've seen this. Uh, if you haven't, you've got to really start to learn this and understand what it is. Uh, and start to understand how to do like integrate it over with uh, uh, the other tools to do, let's say, um, automatic uh, vulnerability scanning, you know, with uh, Qualys, which is, you know, can be, you know, integrates very nicely with it as well. Uh, but that that's another, you know, that's very important. And then you start looking at, you know, how you set your Azure policy up for your environment to begin with, how you do and store your encryption keys or your passphrases. There's a key vault, which is uh, outside of the cloud. You, you consider like something like a hardware security module or HSM, where you store your secrets, uh, your private keys, your passwords, et cetera. Um, not like personally, but you know, for systems to, uh, to communicate with, you know, application, application type of system or web service to web service communication. Um, and you keep on going down the list all the way down to, you know, like disk and storage encryption, how that's done, how you encrypt your databases, how you, how you do key management with that, uh, denial of service as well. Uh, if you keep on going, keep on going down the list, right? So you have something called Azure Information Protection, which is all about protecting the data wherever it is, whether it's uh, a file that's in storage in a file server, <clears throat> whether it's a file up like in SharePoint, whether it's a file that's been sent via email. How do you secure all that? To integrate all that in with O365 or Microsoft 365, and, and how that integrates also with um, you know, that's just the AIP piece. Then you start talking about how you protect your SQL databases, whether it be the platform as a service or whether it be infrastructure as a service, you're standing up your own VMs up in Azure, which you could do, or you do their 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 PaaS uh, platform as service model. They're different and how you secure them is different. Uh, and there, there are options, <clears throat> which is the very important. Uh, one of the last pieces is, you know, Microsoft, you know, looking at this is, you know, everyone's heard buzzwords like EDR, TDR, MDR, and then now XDR, right? For the, you know, basically doing the extended detection and remediation or response, however you want to look at it. Um, this is basically looking at, you know, you're protecting things that are in the cloud, your resources in the cloud, your resources in your data center, let's say a private data center, resources on-prem, resources as the remote, you know, um, like laptops, et cetera, all those different various pieces, servers, desktops, laptops, et cetera. All that integrated into a one-stop single pane of glass to look at. Uh, Microsoft has their own XDR solution, but there are plenty of other um, solutions out there as well, third parties that integrate. It just happens that Microsoft integrates very, very well with the Microsoft uh, tools, the other security tools. And last not, but not least, something that's becoming hot on the market that everyone's talking about is the Internet of Things, IoT. So obviously Microsoft's jumping on that, and that's very new um, in this space of how to do the, uh, the security for IoT up in Azure. 
So what the one thing here is that you have all these security tools and you figure out, you know, yeah, how do you build your requirements, understand what level you need, what your design should look like, uh, how you're going to manage it. But before you do that, you really need to understand what model are you going to use in the cloud. And for that, I'm going to turn that back over to Nestor. So Nestor can talk about uh, a few of the different models. Yeah, so one of the things that uh, organizations are dealt with today is they they need to use some kind of SaaS type solution that vendors will host either in Azure, AWS, or wherever in the cloud, where you really don't have any choice, right? They they are what they are, and it has to be managed by usually the vendor. Uh, most of the time, you don't need to manage that, but the vendor does. Um, but a lot of people, as they're starting their journey, most of you, as you said, uh, are, have on-prem technology, application, users, servers, networks that you still have to manage, right? No matter how you're doing the migration to to the cloud. Um, sometimes you you know some organizations are building their own platform, right? They're they're doing their own development, which has its own nature and security controls that now you would have to manage as well. Or maybe you just want to lift and shift uh, your your servers, and, and use you know the infrastructure as a service component uh, of the cloud. So it's all up to you then, right? It's you you put your servers there, you secure it as you wish, but at the end of the day, you probably will definitely have a combination. This is where it starts getting complex, and the security controls are different for each one of these platforms. So we've seen uh, again most of our our customers are in this hybrid category where they're on-prem, but for sure they got to have SaaS maybe on AWS, but they're building their platform on Azure and they, they they also have a private data center, which is, you know, it's another cloud. It doesn't matter, you know, it's just another computing site that is private, but you still are have the infrastructure there that has to be managed. So I think at the end of the day, most people are doing the hybrid solution so we take a look at all the components and see what that share model would be between you as a customer and the vendors and what level they provide and what level it goes to you. So Greg, you know, any experience you want to share with us and, and this model and, and it kind of will, will dovetail into that share model that Microsoft is putting out to. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. So it's pretty simple. This, this, uh, this graphic is from Microsoft. Give them credit here. Uh, but very important for you to understand. So it's like you have the different models, the you know, software as a service, platform as a service, or infrastructure as a service are all the way to on-prem, right? Left to right. Uh, basically, everything in the blue, you as a customer, or we, you know, we as well as customers are responsible for. Everything in the light gray is Microsoft. So, you know, at the bottom, yeah, sure, it's on Microsoft's physical data centers, their, their physical networks, their physical hosts. Um, and then everything becomes, okay, wh who's doing what at that point, right? So if you're doing SaaS and PaaS with Azure, like the, the database PaaS and stuff like that, there's a lot of, um, there's security kind of mixed. You know, there's some things you have to do and there's some things that um, Microsoft does. If you're doing the operating system, same thing. It's like, okay, they're gonna handle most of the operating system pieces in the SaaS and PaaS, uh, but if you go to infrastructure service, it's all up to us, right? Um, you out there, you putting, you know, deploying your VMs, et cetera, your virtual machines up there, whatever, whatever flavor it is, Microsoft, Windows, or whether it's uh, Linux up in Azure. Same thing at the network level, you know, SaaS and application level is, is them. And then, you know, on the platform of service, there's gray area. So, and, and the reason, reason I talk about this is that you've really got to understand, okay, what model am I putting up into Azure? What am I really doing? Um, or really any cloud, right? But Azure here and this specifically here. And what what is what am I a customer responsible for doing and figuring out versus what Microsoft's going to do for you? I think when a lot of people started looking at doing um, you know Azure and AWS, both of them together, when they really first started going out, they were starting to put up their own data, you know, data databases up in the cloud, and um, not understanding that oh, I can just put them in the cloud and it's I have to worry about security. Just think it was it was already covered. And then we saw all the issues with different data leakages going out of there. Um, over, over the years, there's been many years that that's been going on. So I think now the, the shared model is starting to be understood. The Microsoft's put in all the complex, you know, our comprehensive uh, security controls that are available for all of us to use. And now it's about figuring out how we design, what do we need to use, how we design it, 
and then how do we manage on a daily basis? And so that's something that, you know, we in the Avera, I mean, that's what we focus on. We focus on a lot of the blue, like up in Azure, and that's what we do to help uh, our customers out. So that's what we do, whether it's in Azure or whether it's a hybrid, what like Nestor was saying, whether it's a private data center or on-prem and Azure co uh, combination. And so just quickly uh, going through a couple of these things. So, you know, your security controls, just hit some of them again. You have, when you initially set up your framework, you know, your, excuse me, your, your tenant and your subscription, you've got to look out for the governance over that whole, whole piece. And you got to drive the governance from the top down. It makes it so much easier as you go versus having to retrofit it afterwards. Make sure you get all the monitoring and reporting pieces that are there. Integrate over to the service management pieces, whether you use a service management tool inside of Azure or if you use you know, something outside like a JIRA or ServiceNow or something else or ConnectWise, et cetera. Um, the client endpoints around XDR, right? That's not only for desktops, but it's also for servers. Um, and then really hit all of your identity access management controls. I'm not gonna go through all, all the rest of the bullets, but you can see there's a lot of different pieces up here to make sure that you're going through and making sure you're hitting that uh, as, as you're going through your process of standing up your Azure environment. And yes, of course, we do do that as well. We help people out with the SIMS, with the IEM, with Active Directory, with data and database security, uh, Azure Information Protection, et cetera. Right? So we do that today for our clients. So now, now what I want to do is I'll turn back to Nestor and when him and I will go back and forth and tag team on a couple of reference architectures that we've seen out there in the marketplace. Uh, and so that uh, will hopefully, hopefully uh, you know, bring, uh, bring some uh, visuals to how all the stuff fits together. Let's do a poll as well, Greg, right before we oh. get there. Oh, yeah, let me do the poll. Thanks, Nestor. Yep. So, Shar, you can do the poll. So, what security controls do you plan to implement for your Azure environment? Yeah, and this is this is very important here, you know, to Shar, right? Because <clears throat> you've got to look at all the, you know, the security controls comprehensively, but you may not have to implement all the security controls based on what your business requirements and technical requirements are. So you don't have to feel compelled to do all of it, but it'd be interesting to see what uh, what uh, the audience says. Oh, all of the above. Well, there you go. That's, That's very thing. good. And then yeah. a third of them are talking about Azure Information Protection um, and Azure Rights Management. That's, um, you know, Azure Rights Management is very important for setting up things in, in Azure and, and figuring out how to do that uh, automated is a, is, a, is, a, is a really good thing to do So because you're doing a lot of setups with that. And AIP is people are just really starting to jump on that as well because there's a lot of uh, a lot of promise with that. Great. Thanks, Char. And Nestor, let me turn it over to you for the architecture. Sure. So um, this picture represents a, a complex environment, but it, it, it's being seen more and more often today. Uh, as I keep uh, reiterating that a hybrid solution is the majority of our customers or people that we are talking to. Uh, they start with a private data center. Some of them have mainframe and that's not going anywhere to the cloud. But again, that is a, a cloud onto itself, right? But a lot of people start migrating to the cloud, they may have like a SaaS solution in the AWS here, and they may have Office 365 on Azure. So Microsoft has that 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 marketing uh, uh, sense of saying, well, a lot of our customers really have a hard time uh, managing their Office uh, uh, suites in, in their own personal data center. If we move it up to the cloud, we're responsible for that. We'll take care of that. But what happens is now you have Office 365, we have Azure Active Directory up there, it makes sense for you to migrate more of your workload, more of your applications, uh, your your VM and servers up there because you already have a, a, a an instance, a, a, a subscription to Azure. But the the user community that asses your your systems, your backend systems, your applications, can come up from as you can see on the top there, can come from different locations, different types of users. Right. So what we like to do is, you know, let's let's front end, let's gate that front end access so we could do identity access management for all those folks coming in, wherever they come in, however they come in, whatever roles and responsibilities they have, and then force them to use two factor authentication. So we have the the Azure Active Directory where they authenticate ID and password, and then we force the two factor authentication. Again, that's a design way of doing that. 
Another way is how do we communicate between all these, you know, different data centers and entities? And we suggest to put on VPN gateways and have them talk to each other through this SD-WAN setup, right? So now all the clients on top will use a, a client VPA, v, I'm sorry, a client VPN to access through that to factor authentication to the SD-WAN. And we've seen more and more of this. But the other key point I want to make on this drawing is that we want to put the security controls as close to the managed object as possible. So you see those little locks there. We're putting an antivirus, ED, uh, PDR, XDR, um, file information management, encryption. We put it at the lowest level, closest to uh, to the managed resource. Obviously, on the mainframe, we, we only have three flavors, ACF2, Top Secret, and RACF, and a plethora of different database backends with their own security controls. So putting all those controls closest to to that model, then we can do a multi-tier SIM type of solution where we can normalize the data so that way we can consolidate the data and then we'll correlate the data and move it up to a security manager or manager on top for, for reporting and, and compliance reporting. Greg, any, any other comments you wanna make about this? I'd say one that is that, like you said, you were saying earlier, so you have physical locations where people are, right? Um, retail, retail locations, again, headquarters or a factory or warehouse, or could be, I, th that's, you know, retail example, obviously it could be, uh, could be system integrators for the, uh, the Fed, could be uh, uh, logistics organizations, et cetera, right? Uh, we're, see we're seeing that people have used both AWS and Azure. And so then you have to have some type of integration between the two, excuse me. Apologize for that. You have to have to, you have to have integration between the two, right? So like you're saying, put up a software-defined wide area network or an SD WAN between all the locations, so your back office can communicate and your users can communicate, but also allow the individuals to log on and access components as well, right? Um, and then when the users are logging on, I think uh, the next slide is good, Nestor, is that uh, you can have users log on and then access, you know, their Office 365, their SharePoint, their OneDrive. Um, right, and, and one point that I want to make, Greg, is that we're we at Neovera are technology agnostic, so we have customers all over the place uh, using all kinds of different platforms. So that previous drawing, we we could actually design and execute and manage uh, a hybrid environment like that. Although we're focusing on Azure Cloud today, but just to let you know that uh, we've done that, continue to do that, and have done that many times for our customers today. Now, this is a very high level, super simplified version of the security controls within Azure, right? But at, at the end of the day, the left-hand side, the different types of users, we still recommend to come in through VPN clients. And they could go through that back office resources where now you could use multiple VNets, uh, you can control those gateways to get back on there and have even more security controls within there. The resources that Microsoft Azure provides um, like the Azure Active Directory, <clears throat> which can be, again, once you set up uh, Office 365, you have to set that up as well. But one of the things you could do is synchronize Azure Active Directory with your on-prem Active Directory. So the user credentials are, are done. At that time, when people get access to any of those resources, uh, Azure will automatically uh, get you to the Azure login portal for you to authenticate. Uh, and then again, you could use MFA there at that time for further authentication. But we have, you know, resource groups that you can uh, put a, a lot of these uh, components under and manage it at that level, at the, at the group level. Uh, obviously, with all the encryption, they have a key vault that, that manages all the encryption keys. Um, they have the compliance manager we talked about it as well. But one of the, the key things about security is we have all those managed assets, the controls, the agents, and the controls we put on there uh, go to the log analytics for, again, further reporting and to send that information to the SIM solution, uh, Azure Sentinel. Azure Defender are the things that, that protect the assets at the lower level. So it will uh, cause the alert, cause the event for any security issue 
and send that to Sentinel for, for reporting escalation. Uh, the security center is the one that puts all the controls together to do this. From Azure Sentinel, uh, we, we were uh, lucky enough to work with product management and development out of Israel uh, for, with Microsoft, and we were early beta adopters and are currently managing uh, international organizations using Azure, and, and from there even using SOAR, so we can orchestrate automation out of that. Um, but these are just a few. You saw the original reference architecture, all the different components. But one of the things that we like to do is is approach this in uh, phase implementations, which we'll talk about in a minute. But let's take another poll right now before we go on. Right, does your organization plan to implement a security monitoring solution for Azure? And if so, when? I know that we've had a few people question monitoring solutions and they're looking anywhere from six to 12, but maybe we have some attendees that need a bit sooner well i think uh, the 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 issue of migrating to to the cloud has always been is it secure enough right uh, mm -hmm. and, and you need to put those security controls based in the original design as you migrate there so security needs to be first uh, the rest is actually pretty simple but what you monitor what you do with that those events and how you deal with threats do you automate the fact that if you're getting hacked, the denial of service attack or something, do you reroute them to another sub? Those kind of things need to be built in from, from the get-go in the architecture. What I like about the uh, the poll results is you know, over 50% of the people have already implemented a SIM. And that's not surprising with all the, the SIM tools that have been around for many, many years, right? Uh, Splunk, you know, Logarithm, uh, AT&T's version, right, that they have now. Uh, Sentinels have been out for almost two years now. Um, and, and then many, many others, right? So it's not surprising, and you know that, and that some people do need uh, some support of that because the the, uh, the sims do generate. There can be a lot of traffic generated, and then making sense and filtering out all the noise, so you understand what you really need to focus on, is is the key key component. But it does look like Shar that it looks like 27% of the folks are looking between zero and six months to uh, to implement uh, some type of security monitoring solution for Azure. Right. Okay. All right, great. And so we go to the next slide and it's like, okay, so where do you start? Yeah, one of the things that uh, we do well as part of our consulting uh, arm of NeoVera is to help you get there, right? And, and traditionally, we, this has been done successfully where we look at your business requirements through some consulting uh, assessment. We, we look at your as is, uh, a lot of people want to go directly to the to be state and we miss a lot of things by not documenting your current environment. So it's critical that we do the asset discovery um, and your network and your user community and your applications. And then, you know, we, we design the to be state. This is what it's going to look like. And we do this successfully in phase implementations. Uh, it's 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 a big elephant like like Greg says, and we can't really boil him <laughs> instead of boiling the ocean. We need to take this into phase implementation mode. So we help with the migration of that implementation, and then if you choose so, uh, we also manage services moving forward on that. And 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 really, we're we're, we're not alone. Right? You're not alone. We're here to help. We have many many years of experience, and. Uh, and Greg had, you know, if you can comment on this, we, we've done this successfully for lots and lots of clients where we take them all the way from nothing uh, to complete managed services. Yeah, and I guess the, the key is how do you start, right? Um, and you've got to do your due diligence up front, you know, when you're coming across like, you know, up and dash or for security. Um, we have a simple one, two, three approach, as you see on the screen. But if, you know, if you think about it and you look at it, <clears throat> let's say we're talking, just talking security monitoring, for example, for, so for the 27% of the folks on the phone that were about to implement one, you know, number one, you've got to understand what your assets are that you're going to be uh, trying to get security monitoring around, you know, what the value of those assets, you know, so your asset value, um, because you don't necessarily, not every, not everyone wants to, to get every log uh, possible, right? That can be, it can be very overwhelming. It could also be very cost prohibitive. Right. So you really need to do some due diligence and do an assessment and understand, you know, what what you really need to 
need to secure, how, what level of security you need, um, what level, let's say, security monitoring. Um, so you can, you can make sense of it. And so, so we, we can start off, you know, working with clients at all the various levels, right? So if, if you're just the very, very beginnings of it and you want to do like what we call a feasibility workshop, we're there for you. If you are kind of next flow down on an on-ramp, if you're saying, okay, yeah, I just need, need some help assessing where we're at and how we're going to move these workflows and, and up into Azure. And do we go, do we go infrastructure as service? Do we go PaaS? Do we go SaaS or some type of hybrid? We can help you with that. Um, and, and the other piece is that if you already passed all that, you've already paid a consulting organization to do all that work, et cetera. And you really says, you know what? I need engineering services. I need to you know, get the detailed design done. I need this thing implemented. Um, and I need it done correctly, uh, then we're there for you. And then at, at the end of it is like, I'm sure there's, you know, in any organization, there's internal IT organizations uh, that sometimes, you know, they want, they may need to manage everything. And sometimes they want to outsource parts of it to get to help out with uh, the security uh, and look at it 24 seven, because not everyone does have a 24 seven, 365 shop to actually respond to events at three o'clock in the morning, you know, whether it be, Let's say, you know, a ransomware event that happens that hits, you know, a local machine, a laptop that happens to be have a VPN connection into your Azure back office and all of a sudden your file service are getting encrypted. How do you prevent that? You know, do you do do you do things like split tunneling as an example on a VPN uh, for your clients or not? Uh, that, that's a little tiny, little tiny piece, but it's something to something to really think about. Uh, again, you know, again, thank you, you know, for today for attending the, the, the webinar. This was, you know, again, a, you know, high level inter introduction to kind of demystifies and Azure security. One thing we're looking to do is to do more deeper dives into the Azure security controls and more webinars. Um, so you see a list of some of the things that uh, we're thinking about future that will go deep into how to do like Microsoft Sentinel up in up in Azure, you know, how to do the different various identity access management pieces. Uh, how do you secure your data and database, you know, database uh, security? Um, and how do you do secure remote access, as an example, for the remote workers in your site to sites? It's gonna help out there. So be on be on the lookout, you know, for two things. One is if you're if you have an interest in any of these, yet yeah, by all means you can you can hit us up on an email, which we'll give you at the end of the webinar. Uh, but you can also be looking out uh, probably over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we'll be reaching out to all the folks that attended the webinar to ask, hey, what would you to say? Hey, what would you like to see next? Do you would you like to see a, an Azure informa information protection? Uh, webinar from us where we deep dive into AIP or how to do Azure rights management and maybe how to how to au automate it with the ARM templates and PowerShell and, and other things that we can do right so anyways that at this point Shard I'd like to turn it back to you for uh, see if we have any questions at all from uh, the audience great okay thank you um we do have a couple of questions so the first question is what security controls should I be focused on? Uh, great question. So, that, Nestor, you want to start that, and I'll get back to the uh, I'll sure. go right back to this with some of the some of the security controls, right? So, right. So, um, again, if you're working from zero platform to getting onto Azure, the first thing we want to do is make sure your identities are correct, right? Um, and again, everybody that has Active Directory on prem will use the Azure Active Directory to get the identities uh, correlated between them, um, synchronized. Uh, then you, you wanna see your workloads before you do that. Your environment needs to be secure. Your network layer needs to be secure. So if you're doing, you know, virtual nets, you know, with, you know, different server types and clusters of servers, uh, you wanna make sure that the entry point, the firewalls are done correctly. So everything behind there is protected and setting up those rules correctly in the right protocols for the right ports, et cetera. So it's kind of like a yeah, ISO stack, right, Greg? You know, it's like you work from your network layer up uh, all the way to the app layer and the user layer. So you, there's no difference here in terms of the design. Right. But jump in too, you remember that shared security model, right? With uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or SaaS, you have to look at that to see, you know, what, what Microsoft's going to provide up in Azure versus what you have to provide. Um, also, in addition to that, too, is you have to look at there's you know two major flavors of Azure, which not everybody knows, right? There, there's Azure, which most commercial organizations go into, and then there's Azure government, right? And if you're a government, if you're an 
organization, if you're a government organization, you got a lot, of, a lot more stuff you got to adhere to. If you're a system integrator, then you're going to do business with the government, uh, U.S. government or another, you know, another, another government outside the U.S. There are regulations for that as well uh, that you have to adhere to. You know, that fall under NIST uh, and the CMMC, right? So you got to, you got to adhere to those. Uh, so you, you, the, you need to need to be able to look at those and see what security controls are required. Yeah, that's you know for regulations and compliance, let alone just uh, standard security. Yeah, so just really just work up the stack, uh, and um, and again the phase approach uh, would be great to do that. Right. Sure. Do we have any other questions? Okay, wonderful. Yes, uh, I have a couple more. Um, does Neovera provide twenty four by seven security monitoring services for Azure environments? <laughs> that, that's a good softball question. Thanks, Char. No. No. <laughs> uh, so thanks yeah, for put that in there. So uh, yes, we do. Yes, yes, we definitely do provide 24-7 uh, security services for Azure. Perfect. All right. Uh, let's see. A couple more. Does Neovera have a security service to manage my Azure environment? Uh, yeah, it sounds like the same one. From, from earlier, but yes, absolutely, yes, yes, we uh, we do. Okay. And, and then, uh, uh, let's see. Just, and just elaborate on that a little bit. Just you know, again, it's kind of like with if you're you know you need help with um, setting up your the network infrastructure and security up in Azure, we can do that. The operating system level with your VMs or your your VM stacks, um, your database security, uh, your identity access management security, and then again, just reiterate. The very beginnings, and this is something I know that myself and, and the teams in Neovera talk about is that, especially when we're starting to set up projects, right, is that starting up front, you know, from like they say shift left all the way to the left and get the security controls in place and the governance controls in place when you set up your tenant and your subscription from the very beginning and to try to automate that as much as possible, especially if you're going to have a large environment. You definitely need, you definitely want and need to do that. It's because it make things a lot smoother as you, uh, as you, uh, deploy your systems and you start to manage your systems down the road. Yeah, and Greg, and we're seeing millions upon millions of security events coming on a daily basis from some of the customers. So you got to figure out how to automate that, right? Correct, yes. Okay, wonderful. All right, well, let's do one more then. Um, there is, so I have a hybrid solution and moving some servers and workloads to Azure. How would I go about securing both? Well, let's see. All right, so hybrid solution, right? So let me go back to the visual. Um, you can talk to like this picture here because this can show, you know, th th this shows the kind of multiple multiple ways, right? To, to, to start to do it, right? So in this pictorial here, this diagram, you've got an organization up top that is gonna go, let's say into Azure on the on the right, and they're going into AWS. And by the way, we in Avera have clients to do that today, right? Um, you need to set up again. It goes back to the basics, like Nestor was just talking about, right? Which was you have the communication, you know, secured at the network level. So here, in this case, you'd have your software-defined wide area network. You have your VPN gateways. You have your firewalls um, at, at your at your different locations, right? So whether it be AWS and Azure, let's say you have like a split cloud model, or if you have a private data center all the way down the bottom in Azure, and then interfacing back to your you know, physical store locations. You know, let's say it's across the country, across the world, doesn't quite frankly, doesn't matter. Uh, your HQ is wherever it is, and you have multiple warehouses for distribution across the United States, let's say. You have all those connected into your private data centers as well into Azure. Uh, again, with SD-WAN, the VPNs building up, let's say from the network up, like the OSI stack, or like what Nestor mentioned earlier. Uh, but on then from the top down, again, the governance over overall this plus also the identities the authentication the authorization so your RBAC or role-based access control model uh, hopefully you have like your your active directories and your azure ad's you know synced right um, and then you also go ahead and you have your users authenticate with mfa so you see you start to link all that together and then in the case of like a very simple example of this is just you know we showed earlier it was just like on the left hand side people coming in and let's say they're doing vpns for site to site coming into a location for back office resources this is very commonplace today people are just picking up their vms instead of hosting them local you know with vcenter right they're just picking them up or and their private data center they're dropping up in azure you know whether it be linux or windows 
And it could be, you know, file servers, could be inventory management servers, which uh, that's very, very large, obviously, in, in many industries. Uh, are, there fine, are there financial management systems? Are all the above? Uh, are CRM systems, right, as well? And then, then your users, you know, if they're in, in, you know, integrated in with, um, and I would you know, assume in this picture it is, with Microsoft 365, users are logging on and they're using SharePoint, they're using OneDrive, um, and they may be, you know, hopefully move, you know, I know that we talk about a lot in our organization getting files off of everyone's laptops and putting up into a shared file server like in SharePoint or, you know, in, in a uh, data center, you know, like this. So that um, that's what I would go about doing it. Uh, Nestor, anything else to add? Yeah, the, the question started with how do I do that in my on-prem end, right? So one of the important things is to make sure um, that we capture the as is because uh, whatever you're doing in prem should match what we do in the cloud and there may be different technologies so because it you know the question was well, how do i manage both right um and there are two different models so we need to really articulate and, and document the as is on prem before we we, we do that on in azure right so we would do that with the solution design and requirements documents up front right and then follow it back up with an as deployed uh, type of a design document Right, showing on the next slide there. Great. Yep. Okay. Just looking at time and respecting everyone's time, uh, Shard, is it just a last call for any questions? No, actually, uh, we there aren't any other questions that have popped up. Okay, so, perfect. Turn it back to you then. Okay, great. Well, um, we are at the end of our presentation for today. Um, so in addition to us sending out a link to this recording, uh, we will also be sending a ransomware white paper for you to read. Uh, we have a little preview there on the screen. Uh, but if you do happen to have further questions or would like to talk with NeoVera, uh, please email us at info at neovera.com, which is also listed in uh, the slide. And uh, we'll be more than happy to set up a time to speak further. So thank you all again for attending our webinar and wishing everyone a great day.